Welcome to the Programmatic Digest, a podcast dedicated to reviewing industry trends and latest news in the programmatic and ad tech world. I'm Ellen Parker, your host and Chief Programmatic Sensei of Ellen Parker Consulting, where we offer one-on-one coaching or a six-month training and development program in programmatic media to fit you and your team's needs. So thank you for joining us. Remember to subscribe right below and enjoy the show. All righty. Welcome back, everyone, to the Programmatic Digest podcast. We have a special guest today, Eric Elliott from VIP Marketing. Oh. How are you doing today? I'm well. I can't believe you just called me special. I feel so good. Now. Thank oh, you man, so you're one of me. the many unique <laughs> guests that have graced the podcast. But I'm really excited to talk to you because you Thank also you. have a podcast, and that's how I came across you and your LinkedIn, um, your LinkedIn content. What is your podcast? Yeah. It's called the AdCast. It's the AdCast. Uh, you know, we said, you know, it's for aggressive, aggressive advertisers and motivated marketers. We talk to business owners of all walks of life and also creators as well. Okay, great. Well, um, well, um, we want to hear more about the podcast, but before mm-hmm. we get into today's conversation, which is going to be around, let's say, traditional marketing versus digital marketing, we talk, talk about creative messaging. We're going to talk about partnership, internal and external. Um, So before we get into those topic of conversation or discussion, can you introduce yourself for those who don't know you yet? Yeah. You know what? I I think uh, I wouldn't care if if I uh, was in the number one search page of Google, I'm still going to introduce myself because you you, you always have to continue to do that every day. Mm -hmm. Uh, My name is Eric Elliott, and I lead a group of uh, brands. Uh, VIP Marketing, which is a digital marketing agency, Craft Creative, which is a video creative agency. And we also have our our baby of the group, which is 10 Mile Studios, which is a uh, full service video production studio, all based in North Charleston, South Carolina. Uh, And uh, our companies are from uh, one year old up to uh, 12 years old. So, I mean, we're happy. We're proud. I got a great team of people. Uh, all around the world that work with us. So we're happy. That is dope. Talk to us about how you got to where you are today. How did you get to being first an entrepreneur, business owner? Like what, what is, what, what does uh, your, when you ask, if somebody asks you about your journey and then mm-hmm. where you started and where you come from, what are those going to be? Like, what, what can you tell me about yourself yeah. a little bit more? Well, I failed and I got fed up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How's that, that sound? Is- and and that was kind of enough to kind of push you to say like I want to do something different, right? Uh-huh. Um, I I started out years ago, you know, and I don't want to bore you with that career as an old restaurant guy, and I used to travel and open restaurants, uh-huh. and and it, it taught me something. It taught me people. And when I went into uh, media sales, I started out in radio sales, and then went into broadcast television, uh, which was where I had probably one of the worst, the worst sales experiences. I wow. work for um, uh, a national, uh, C- well, CBS affiliate, a local CBS affiliate, okay. um, and it was it was it was not the best, you know, um, employment situation. You know, great product, fantastic product. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and you know the people that I work with, they were great. And then some would say like, okay, well, what else was it? Well, it was kind of the leadership part of it that was really hard. For me, the leadership part. Um, and in direct reports, that was very hard for me. And every now and then, uh, I pull out my 12 year old review and I read it, you know, where, uh, everything was like, you failed, you failed, you failed. Wow. That is crazy. One day, one day some content, I'm going to pull it out. So like I said, um, I failed and I got fed up, you know, so, um, it was, I wanted leadership. I was very hungry in what I was doing. And I felt that I knew what I was doing, but uh, at the time, the the boss that I had or the manager that I had uh, just said, to, they said to me, you don't know how to negotiate agency business and okay. you haven't grasped the, uh, the uh, you haven't grasped our business yet. And it hurt me to my core, but I was fed up. And I always said like, hey, I wanted to be able to go out, do this on my own. I felt like I had enough talent. I could talk to people. Um, I understood media. I could serve them well. I could be transparent, all of those things. And I I called my wife and said, I'm going to do it. And she said, well, you hadn't failed as yet. 
and I left. I sat at home on a couch. I never had a name for my company. And and then we started from there. Okay, so I'm going to take the next 30 seconds to let you know about the Reach Frequency, which is a course you have asked me for, okay? And I've spent a lot of time crafting every single lesson just for you. Why should you even consider? And then I'm already pretty aware of what's going on in my advertising. I love your podcast content. This is where I'm here. Cool, great. But you may know somebody that really wants to learn about programmatic advertising and don't know where to start right? Most likely you've received training via your current job or via a previous job, right? You work for an agency, you work for a partner or a vendor in the industry, and they provided uh, the, the training, right? Is that how you got here? Well, did you know that that's the, actually the only way to get training nowadays? Like if for any one of our friends in the digital marketing world, it's really hard for us to, for them to really learn anything if they don't know who, where, and, and, and really what to to look for. So the Reach and Frequency course is geared for those people. It's going to take you from zero to 100, from fundamentals to how to run a successful programmatic media campaign, how to run a successful department if you wish to be a leader or lead a department in programmatic advertising. The Reach and Frequency course is for you, okay? We talk about, we talk about anything from fundamentals. We talk about anything from who are the key players in the industry. But the biggest thing is that I give you my recommendation, my feedback, my guides. I was a trader. I was a buyer for few, for eight plus years, right? And I led teams. I led teams of buyers. So I'm really, really, really good when it comes to running a programmatic advertising strategy, implementing, executing, optimizing, and reporting on, and then selling some more. So I'm really good at that. So yeah, you can probably get most of this training out there. Great. Don't only stop at with my course, continue training because that's 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 what it's all about, right? But what you won't get anywhere else and you'll get with me is all of that experience I've been able to gather, you've been able to implement. Like this is an interactive course for you to learn anything you should know about programmatic advertising, whether you're already working in it or you're trying to work in the industry. So check out the Reach and Frequency course brought to you by me, your very own programmatic coach. I'm very grateful for this experience that I've gone through the last two years and I'm here to teach you everything that I know. Check out Reach and Frequency dot live reach and frequency dot live and now back to the episode that is that's great that's great so i think a lot of us listening can relate to some extent to the story where we we um stayed maybe in a toxic environment oh yeah uh, yeah so i wanna i wanna highlight a little bit more on that because there's a reason why in ad tech and advertising technology as you know mm-hmm average ad ops or media buyer um life or 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 work life at an agency average less than two years like i think it was 18 months and it's simply for that reason in my experience is 100 percent on the buy side and on the agency side like i've Mm -hmm. always end up working for some some level of startup (laughs) Uh i was was always the first trader or or almost the first trader and then help (laughs) train the rest of them right and so that's what i do with my agency clients now but what what would you tell somebody listening like okay how do i know like i can relate to what eric is saying right now but i like my coworkers. like how do you know when it's time to go or what how do you define a toxic environment for those individuals if you're not growing i think if you're not growing if you're mm. not respected if you're not being led um, and if you can't look down the road and see yourself growing within where you are, then leave. It's almost like being like, Hey, I'm the smartest person in the room. You're not learning anything yeah. anymore. Um, I, I, I think, uh, when you're in a toxic environment, it's almost like a bad relationship. You, you would hear these stories, these horror stories of some people who've been battered and bruised and they stay in these relationships. And the first thing people say is, well, you know, like, why'd you stay so long? Well, it's very hard for them it's very hard for people to get out of those bad relationships. And sometimes like if you compare that to the work environment, um, it may be a bad relationship, but some of the good things that they find is actually within the people that they work with, you know, and that, and sometimes it's actually the people that you work with that actually help you to hold on to that job 
longer than the paycheck that you're getting. I don't know which book I read it in. I think it's Outliers or is it who? Not how. I'm not sure exactly which book I read it. It was in the last six months though. But mm-hmm. they were saying how a social worker was saying that babies that are mistreated, like abused, would rather stay with their mom that are um, abusing the baby mm-hmm. because it's a familiar pain versus a new change. And it's as true. human being, we don't like change. Change is almost a cuss word. Like people don't like change. It's, <laughs> it's scary for people. And I'm like, what? Are you serious? If things don't change, oh. I'm, I'm like, I'm making... I'm making things. I'll like move my office so many times. I go, wait, hold on. Right. It's too comfortable right now. I got to get uncomfortable because yeah. like, otherwise you just wake up six months later and you're like, yo, what just happened? Like we are already, I see in my, my two year old, she's turning two next oh, year. Yeah. And I'm like, yo, it yeah. was just one month ago where I, I remember her being like this and it's so crazy. And I know every parent tells me that, like, enjoy every moment. <laughs> <laughs> enjoy every moment. Trust me. I know. I, I think, you know, in those relationships like that, or or you, you use the comparison to like a toddler or a child, yeah. um, they are already in a relationship where they are being hurt and they don't know what the next hurt is going to look like, you know? So they don't know what the next hurt is going to look like. So what do you do? You just stay and you make as much comfort as you can, you know? Yeah, it's it's so interesting and super interesting. Um, but thank you for sharing, because I think it's really important for people to know that they are empowered and they do have a choice. You know how oh, in, the real estate, in the real estate industry, they're saying that it's the seller's market, right? The sellers like have the upper hand. There's so many more buyers in our industry. It's definitely the employee market It's like a talent market right now. So you have the upper hand when it comes to negotiating benefits, salaries. And, and if you're staying and I'm not encouraging job hopping, mm-hmm. but I don't care if you're averaging three months, if you're not finding your right, like, I don't know, maybe <laughs> it's me, but I'm, I'm not going to, I wouldn't stay in a toxic environment. And I have stayed in a toxic environment because like you said, I wasn't fully aware of my value, of my worth, and mm-hmm. also my capabilities into starting new again, kind of starting new. Well, it's, it's not, I wouldn't say it's uh you know, you said real estate and it's a buyer's market and it's a, now it's an employee's market. I think it's a team member's market now. Mm-hmm. People don't want to be but, uh, just an employee anymore. They want to be, they want to be a part of something. Mm-hmm. And, and especially the workforce today, they want to have purpose. They don't want to just, you know, be part of a company to say, Hey, we're here just for big profits. They want to have a purpose mm-hmm. and they want to be a part of something. So I would say, it's a team members market is what it is right now. But I think a lot of employers, they have to wake up. I yeah. did. I had to, you know, me, I was, you know, I, I like I said, I came from restaurants where, you yeah. know, a 10, 12 hour shift a day was nothing to me, but you know, the people coming up, you know, under me, yeah. <laughs> I, I would, I would expect them to do the same thing I did, but Ooh. they can't, you know, they, it's not that, not that they can't, it's just, it's the times have changed. Yeah. Now people want to be able to live their life. Mm-hmm. That's okay. Sometimes I'll call my people in the middle of the day. I'll call team members in the middle of the day and say, leave your computers and go walk. Get away and go walk. And, and it's what they need. You know, they want to be a part of something. If you, you want to make your company grow, take care of your people. Yeah. Just take I care mean, of your people. I don't think they heard you loud enough to say one more time. Like, cause I don't think they heard you. Loud <laughs> enough. Like, if and then, you, if you want to make your company grow, thank you. Take care of your people take care of them defend them if they do something wrong you praise them in public you criticize them in private but you teach them and you grow them grow them into leaders you know i posted something a long time ago like on social media and i said like you know it was an old snoop dog quote oh yeah and uh, it was a video from snoop dog and then uh and he said and and pretty much what he said was i don't want to be the boss of you I want to be able to grow you up. So one day that you can give me a day off, mm-hmm. you know, and, and that's exactly what you should be striving for as a leader. Um, not trying to put your boot on the neck of the people who are working for you, but how you can lift those people up. Because if you take care of them, they will defend that company like it's their own. Yeah. I and I, you know, I love what you said, because like defending, huh, defending needs to be like really highlighted, bolded, increased in font and like in this, because 
because we think because we're supposed to be expert, we are mm-hmm. not, we shouldn't make mistakes. And we are grown, like it, we're grown into an environment where mistakes are like big no no's, like you shouldn't do that. Like mm-hmm. at the end of the world, you're not, you know, you're not an expert. If you make a mistake, you should know better. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it just, it just drives me nuts because I'm like, yo, it doesn't matter how small, big that mistake is. A mistake is a mistake, yes. But why would, why did it really happen? Let's, uh, let's identify the source and not why the person made the mistake. 99% of the time when we, like, when we, we get back to the source, it's a, a process that failed, a system that failed. The you person, the person is the one actually executing, but there are environmental things that happen where even if they, there's no environmental things that happen and we, then that means that we need to train the person a little bit more. We need to cater to make sure that they are able to be self-sufficient. So there's always like, there's always a reason why this person would be mistaken. I'm not normalizing mistake. And maybe I am, maybe I am normalizing mistakes mm-hmm. when it comes to being like in a team. And I love the fact that you said defend because I've seen a lot of managers that don't step up for their employees and actually like just push them aside, you know, like it's yeah. Oh, push yeah. them aside. I, I think we have to, as marketers, you have to remember you are a practitioner. Mm-hmm. You will fail. Mm-hmm. Not every, not every campaign you put on your operating table is going to survive. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Um, and, and it's just like, you know, a lawyer practices law, a doctor practices medicine. And we practice marketing. We do things and we prescribe things. And sometimes what we prescribe, it doesn't always give us success, you know? And, and, I, and I know the severity and the importance of what a doctor does, you know, from the issues I've even had with my own center, how important a good doctor is. But the truth is, you are practicing marketing. You are a practitioner. You won't always get it right. But yeah. <laughs> when, you, when you build up enough knowledge and enough experience, guess what? Very few times will you miss. Very few times. It's so powerful because <laughs> I've had, I remember like running a whole strategy, planning that strategy, executing and totally mm-hmm. missed. KPI <laughs> yeah. were not, KPI were not what they were supposed to do, but supposed to be, excuse me, and completely fell. And the client looking at us saying like, you told me I would get this result and I didn't. Yeah. Happen. yeah. And in yeah. this situation, I swear, like, because as Jesse just said, I really wanted to say like, ah, shit happens, I guess, you know. But ultimately, <laughs> we we did we didn't say that we were diplomatic. But ultimately, it was like we're we're testing. This is still testing mode. Like now that we failed, we know what not to do, and we can test other things. But then also, clients are very um, results driven, but also they're very cost driven. I'm gonna say like they want to see some type of return. And one of the misconception with programmatic advertising is because it's real time and it's. Uh, digital like that the results mm-hmm. are supposed to come in like as soon as you turn it on but i'm like no no this is still advertising it's mm-hmm. still marketing you still need a ramp up period even though we're able to make changes more efficiently we still need to identify you know our, our learning curves here especially yep. the prior historical data because that's also another another conversation so i like the fact that you call us practitioner i think i'm going to use it again so thank you for sharing that no worries um i, I think the thing is people um, marketers, we forget that we, our first job is to educate them. We should educate them on what we're doing. And when you are educate them, you know, the patient that actually does the research on the symptoms, they are better patients is what, the, what happens. We have to educate our clients and tell them, here's what I'm going to do. And here's what this means. Here's mm-hmm. a timeline for this, you know, and be able to manage those things up front. And you have to, I think the problem is, and why a lot of clients get disappointed is because we go so much with the bravado, almost like trying to give a guarantee, like it's going to work, it's going to be a slam dunk. And then when they do have disappointment, you know, then we can't handle it because we didn't manage the expectation up front. Yeah. When you said guarantee, it made me think about that one YouTube. Um, oh, I can't remember the company because I would have shut it out. It's it's this gentleman, very nice, very well spoken, but he's like, if you don't get X amount of leads, your mo- your money guaranteed, your money back, <laughs> like whatever. And I'm like, yeah. what? I'm about to buy this. What kind of leads yeah. are you trying to send me? Well, at this point? No, no one can oh. guarantee anything. No, yeah. no one can guarantee anything. Amazon is probably right. one of the most precise companies in the world, 
and they can't guarantee you that that guy's gonna that guy or girl is gonna be at that door at a certain time. Yeah, yeah. At, a, at a specific That's time. Why there's they, a range. They can give you a range. They can give you a range. There but you there's, go. No, there's no guarantee on anything. At That's all. so bomb because I'm Ellen Parker. What if I tell you for 75 bucks a month, you get to join a community with other fellow programmatic ninja, successful ones, ones that are looking to grow, ones that are looking to share what they know and learn from others. Would you be interested? And I get to coach you, coach you through your transformation, coach you through the skill set that you need to know in order to get what you want to get. Either is that raise, either is that promotion, either is even like a different job, right? <laughs> so I'm not a recruiter, y'all. I'm not a recruiter. I'm one of you. I've done what you've been doing for at least 10 years, and I'm here to help you. And in the midst of things, some of my friends from the Programmatic Digest podcast, some of those guest hosts get to come. How many times have you listened to any other podcast and say, dang, I wish they could elaborate on this, or I could ask this. Well, you get a chance to do that in the community. Just for 75 bucks a month, we meet weekly, we grow weekly, we learn weekly, we share authentically, just being ourselves. You know what I mean? Like. Try the first call on me, DM me, send me information, head over to the programmatic meetup.com. I'm sorry, programmatic meetup.com. I know you'll be able to find it anyway. So see you next Friday. And, and then I, I'm glad you gave that example because you're right. Even though they don't exactly tell you like at this time on this date, you know, for this product, it still mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense. Like they give you a range. It's like, oh, we're going to yeah, That's why we have primary KPIs. We, are, we can't have secondary, we can't have a third or fourth or fifth. There you go. That primary KPI is still the range. Like it's an average because people don't like to, to hear for uh, like a max and a minimum. So we give an average of things. So I think it's, just, it's a good segue into um, the conversation about managing partnership mm -hmm. because you mentioned that you have a specific way to manage your partnership. So tell us about it. Well, the, the first thing that we do when we go into anything is mm -hmm. I focus on three things, budget, media, message. Okay. I break it down into those things. Each of those have their own little subcategories, but it's always budget, media, and message. Okay. And we're learning these things upfront from our clients, like what the expectation is. We need to know exactly what they expect. Okay, you're spending $10,000 a month. Out of this $10,000, what is your expectation? And then how are we going to track all this? What are the things that are important to you? So when we're figuring out all these things that are important, all these things that can be KPIs or success, what we do is we manage them weekly, go over them monthly, have reviews quarterly and annually. So that way that we feel like we're informing them all the time. Every week, they're going to get some type of scorecard from us to say, this is how we did. Just imagine your kids going to school, college, elementary school, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, when yeah. they come home, they have a progress report now you know exactly where they stand for that semester. So for us, the semester is going to be every week versus once a quarter. And you literally and, tell them, like, you send your partners. And so when you say partners, you're talking mm -hmm. about, like, vendors that you might contract, hire internally and externally? No, when, we, when I say partners, um, that's the language that we use internally because uh, for our clients. Gotcha. And, and okay. we, we use that language because... It should be a win-win. It's not a tug of war where you win or I win. We both yeah. should win. So like, if we're both winning, we are partners in growing our businesses together. Yeah. So if I'm helping them make money, then we should be able to make money, you know, but I don't want to lead my relationship off with money. Yeah. First, there should be someone, uh, first, it should be someone who actually fits within uh, who our client profile is. The problem is a lot of us don't know exactly who our client profile is. Can you draw a picture of that person who should be your, your client profile and then have a client value proposition saying this is what they want and this is what we want, right? Having these things up front. And I think it's almost like doing production work. If you don't do the hard work up front, you have a hard time in the end. Um, you made me think about um, what you said. So I listened to... Um, your episode with Blair, Blair Ains. Mm -hmm. He's mm -hmm. the author of Win Without Pitching. Win Without Pitching, yeah. And um, y'all were just going, like, you know, he was just saying about um, value, bringing value and pricing. And I thought the conversation was really, really interesting. So mm -hmm. um, I'm going to let you recap it really quick for the 
sure. for the listeners, but I think there was so much value. And I literally wanted to pause and like write down some of the, oh, <laughs> some of the exchange because it was so I, you much know, value. I, I would tell you, um, Blair Ends is a jewel. Uh, Chris Doe is also a jewel. I like Chris. I, um, you know, okay. So I came across your podcast with mm-hmm. uh, on your inter- with your interview with Chris Doe. And okay, okay. The, the, he said, the, if you want to learn something, teach it. And I literally wrote, wrote it down on my, uh, my sticky notes everywhere. Now I know it by heart. <laughs> and I literally said every other podcast, the listeners yeah. are super tired. My friends, my friends listening are tired of me saying that. Like, if you want to teach, I mean, if you want to learn something, teach it. That's simple. Yeah. Teach it. And then you, when, whenever you want to find out how much you know, you know, yeah. it's, you, when you teach, you find out how much you know. Exactly. Um, you, you know, the conversation with Blair was a really good one because we talked about how a lot of us, you know, one of the hardest things when you're getting into the agency space is pricing. People don't know how to price themselves. They, it's like, oh, I know I'm good. I know I'm good at what I do. What do I charge? And then you just start pulling these prices out of, you know, just out of thin air and hoping that they stick or hoping that they pass by. And mm-hmm. you really don't know your own value, right? Yeah. So, the, so before you start pricing, the first thing you need to know is what do you bring to the table? Your Are body. you going, you're, you're solving a $2 million problem and you're asking them for $500, then you devalue yourself if you're doing that. So knowing, knowing your own value is super important when you're going into any kind of relationship. So with Blair and I, we were talking about, you know, just some of the principles and some of the rules that he set. And some of the things that I even learned from even listening to his book, Win Without Pitching, is that you know, it is against our policy to solve problems until we are fully engaged because everyone will call you and want to pick your brain. Everyone will call you and want to pick your brain because they, they don't see the value in what you have, but you know, you could have attended webinars, conferences, you know, um, spend nights, spend nights away from your family. You built <laughs> value and, 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 and you educated yourself and you're giving it to them. It's no different from when someone pays to go to Harvard or, or go, you know, overseas in England to go to Oxford and you are paying to sit in front of those professors, you're paying for the value and the knowledge that they have. So we as marketers have to learn and understand that we have value and we have knowledge and we're giving it away as well. We have to value what we have learned and what we can contribute to our clients and also our community. It's just like, uh, you made me think about, uh, the value uh, the value question is just like there was a, a anecdote I've read somewhere again in one of them books, and it was like this this plant manager I think it's when and no maybe it's not this plant manager electricity just shut off he doesn't know he's over here and if he doesn't start it, the plant again that's it like they lose production for x amount of month uh, x amount of days uh-huh. you know it's really hard it's really he needs to figure it out so he calls the electrician the electrician literally comes up like two, three minutes, opens the, the box. You know, he looks around for 30 minutes and then open the box. And then once he opened the box, he just cuts something and then everything starts up and he move on. And then yeah. the manager of the plant says like, oh, this, like, how much is it? So the, the electrician, electrician or whoever engineer comes in and then gives him the, um, gives him the, the, the invoice that says $10,000, let's say for the sake of the example. And then the manager's like, oh, heck no, there's no way I'm paying this. You barely right. lose that something and then cut it. And then right. it went, oh, came on, like, what's going on? Right. And then, like, I need more details. Like, give me, so like, give me an itemized invoice. Basically, that's what he asked the electrician. So the electrician is like, okay, he charged a dollar for, like, showing up, right? Like, opening the box. And then he charged, I think, $9,099 <laughs> for knowing which for for knowing which want to be an electrician. Unplug, or yeah, knowing which for to unplug. Yeah. And then the manager paid. Like that's the perfect example of a value. Like you your clients might not know which for to unplug or plug back in, but you yeah. know. So even if they say, like, oh, you did this in a faster amount of time, I shouldn't pay that much. No, you're paying for the the value. Like you've done this training, yeah, you've attended absolutely. all of this, right? You had some absolutely. practice. I don't care if you're one year into a position. If you've done things consistently, listen, not a lot of people are going to agree with this, but if you've done <laughs> some things consistently and you've grown, like from day one to day 100, you're a different person because of the amount of knowledge, the, the experience you've gone through, then you can 
start asking for more money moving forward. Like you absolutely can't, especially in the programmatic advertising world. Like I remember learning so much in my first year that set me up literally in year two, three, four, it was basically just practicing what I learned in year one, honestly. And practicing it with maybe a larger but decline because we're talking about campaign management here. So, mm -hmm. and reporting and insight, like, like maybe sexifying the way I was looking at things now more than anything, but the concept, everything concept like happened in year one. So just, just, be, just be mindful of that. That's why in my community, I have a community called the Programmatic Meetup. And it's just a bunch of us, like we were zero plus to 10 years in the industry. You know, everyone is from the publisher side. Um, mm -hmm. I have a director, I have a manager, I have a trader. I have like, there's different people in the, in the community, but um, I love the community because we get to talk about those things. We get to understand like what's happening, like where, where everybody is, what everybody's talking about. And I always tell them like, we're not good at talking about ourselves in a good way. We're not. Right. The yeah. first thing we do when we join the, the, the call is like, I need y'all to talk about two wins and one challenge. I don't even call it a failure. I call it an opportunity or a challenge. You're going to talk about two good things first, and then you're going to let me know what was something you wish you had maybe handled a different way or something that really bothered you. And then, but I do that to focus on the positive because we're so good at talking bad. And another thing, when they share the wins, I'm like, I need you to go back into that email that you received from your boss, take a screenshot, pull it, uh, put it, uh, save it in your feel good folder. I call it feel good folder, your winning folder, whatever you want to call it. And then when you're having those really low days, go back in the folder, reread all your wins, okay? Because you earned it, you did it. It's for you to win, to celebrate. And then when you're going for that next job or that promotion, two years from now, two months from now, these are all your receipts you can take with you and say, here are things I've done for my team. Like one of our gentlemen in the, um, in the meetup, he helped his agency save, I don't know, I think it was 100K plus, 70K, let's say 50K mm. plus, because he took the time to perform a check-in, like a checkup of certain things. And then he caught a couple of mistakes and then he fixed it. Luckily, it was fixed early on as it should you know before you launch a campaign you're supposed to check it a few times before and so mm -hmm. he followed the process and implemented a new process and caught something i said you need to write it down and when you're in front of a recruiter even if you're in front of that yeah. manager you tell them i helped save this much and i want to do more by teaching others and being a supervisor or a manager wow. of the team you know but wow. you gotta have your winning folder i got one i got one yeah uh, you know, I, I think any day you're in business and any day you're above ground, you're winning. Yeah, uh, amen. If, That's if, another if, thing if, too. If you, if you have the ability, yeah. if you have the ability to do, um, you're winning. Every day you get a chance and you get a choice. And so when you can make either of those, you are winning. You know, and I, and I you know, yeah. the win, the win's not always in the driveway or the bank account or the big, or the big house in the cul-de-sac. That's oh. not always the win. Sometimes the win are the people that are right in front of you are the people that you love, you know, mm -hmm. because it, when you money is just one of those things that will come mm -hmm. if you do the right thing. If you don't do the right thing, the money won't come. Yeah, exactly. You know? That's good. So That's it, it's, it's, it's just good to really focus on just doing a good job. Just yeah. do a good job, <laughs> do a good job and increase your value. You know, you're going to have yeah. to you know your value because if you don't know your value, the world will not raise your price. Mm. Not at all. That that's it. That's it. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what else I can ask. And we're gonna move into the closing segment. <laughs> we can't even. There's no better way to finish the conversation or close this conversation. Um, but okay. So let's move into closing the closing segment where sure. I ask a couple fun questions. All so right, tell let's us do like it. one fun fact about yourself. Man, I like to be prepared. I may not be the best, but I'll be the most prepared. That? That's not a fun fact. That's like that's a fun. character. <laughs> no, that's 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 fun. That's, that's fun. Cute. I like I like I like being overprepared. Okay, so fun <laughs> fact about myself: I, I'm I'm really silly, really silly. Okay, that's good. Re that's good. Really silly. Mm -hmm. You like to do pranks like on on um April first? Are you one of those pranksters? No, my 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 oldest daughter, her birthday is April first, so I, I've never really seen my husband April 1st. too. Like, I've never really seen, you know, uh, you know, like the April first is like the day you crack jokes and do things like that. But <laughs> yeah. I mean, every day in in my home, it's 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 a 
it's fun, you know? So, yeah. you know, I, 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 I'm able to become a kid with my kids. Yeah. You know? That's so, so dope. Yeah. So yeah. if I would say that's, I'm fun, I'm fun. That's, that's a lot of, that's cool. That's really cool. Uh, yeah. But yeah, my husband is, uh, was born on April 1st. Awesome. Good man. He used to, he used to prank me way back when, but it kind of fell off. So every year I'm like, Ooh, this is the year I'm going to prank him. And then right. I'm like, gosh, his birthday, I'll be nice. So this year again, I didn't plan anything to prank him, but he used to just live like, he used to leave like random, like fake cockroaches or spiders around and I'll open oh. and I'll jump on me. I'm like, yo, <laughs> what the heck? Like, you know, like oh, people, man. people can die from this. You know, you need to chill, like stop doing this. You know? Yeah. Oh but my anyway, gosh. He's uh he's one of those people. But now he's like well, like you know, he's like daddy mode, so he's more like protective and whatever. Um but all right, good. so if there is let's play the what if game, right? I haven't played this game. Sure, before. let's do it. So what if game is something like a dream that's probably going to sound super impossible to somebody listening. So mm. let me give you an example. I'm like, what if I retire my mom in the next six months right like it's crazy so it has to be crazier it has to have like a, a really big meaning to you and it has to have some type of end date so what would what would a what if statement be right now mm. what if we had money to feed the poor and not for war mm -hmm. That's good. What, you know um uh you know tupac had a line he said we got money for war but not to feed the poor the poor yeah and, yeah and, no, I you know, I, familiar. You okay. know and I, i've been inside of like dc and some of these major cities and even even dc you know like within two miles from the white house you'll see people who are homeless or even our national monuments even yeah. veterans you know and i think you know yeah. it's i always hear you know we're going to send them 200 million or 200 billion and and yeah. there's enough money that circulates in this country to help to hopefully do the right thing. So if I had to say like, what's that B hag, that big hairy audacious goal that I'd love to see yeah. happen. But that one thing I'd love to see happen is to have money for the poor and not for war. That is so dope. That is so dope. You know what, what is one thing you could, what is one advice you can give your younger self starting in the industry think about yourself as a freshman in the industry entry level like you first started so many years ago what would be one advice you want to give yourself that you wish you knew then but you know now stop caring what other people think mm, that's good yeah stop caring what they okay. think because when you care what they think it influences how you walk mm -hmm. how you talk how you dress and everything else so mm -hmm. stop caring what they think that's, That's really dope. Else, so. That's really dope. Gary, thank you so much for dropping by. This awesome, was man. so amazing. If anybody wanted to follow up with you, your information man. is going to be in the, the description. But yeah. tell the listener, like, how can they reach you? Man, I am everywhere online as Eric M. Elliott, two L's, two T's, and Elliott. Uh, or go to my website. It's ericelliott.com. This is just Perfect. that easy. Oh yeah. my gosh, perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much for dropping by. Thank you by. so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.